Just miles north of Milan, New Mexico, at 100 feet high, 200 acre feet long, and 22 million tons, sits the Homestake Uranium Mill tailing site. The tailing site is two piles of radioactive waste that sits unlined and sparsely covered, leaking contaminants directly into groundwater and spreading radon throughout the surrounding communities. This site contains waste from the last uranium boom from the 1940s through the 1980s, in which this area produced nearly half of all the uranium produced in the U.S. for the making of nuclear weapons. Today, the unremediated contamination continues to plague local communities. Well, we moved here in 1975 because we wanted to live in an area where we could raise animals and uh, have irrigation water and plenty of water to use. And in about 1976, 77, uh, we got notice that we shouldn't be drinking the water anymore. And, uh, and it's been going on ever since that time. And we're foolish enough to believe that in 10 years, the water would be clean, we could use our wells again, and all would be well. When my children, my daughter and her husband, decided they'd been living in grants also, they'd like to have property out of town. I said, golly, this is a wonderful area because you have irrigation, which you don't have in very many places around here. Um, you've got a nice rural setting, and we're going to be have clean water in 10 years, so come on out. Let's, there's a place for sale here. I think you'd be wise to buy it. I think the values are going to go up. Uh, because all is going to be cleaned up and it will be a good place to live. I moved back to the area with my um, family and I found this um, house plan in a book and I asked my dad and my husband if, if we could build this house and so they said if we built it ourselves they thought we could build it. So my dad and my husband and I built this house ourselves. And we thought we'd always live here across, across the street from my mom. And now, according to the EPA's third five-year review, they've known since 2006 that we, um, there are air monitors along the fence line, which is less than half a mile away, that have continuously recorded outdoor air radon that is associated with a cancer risk greater than EPA's acceptable cancer risk range of 1 times 10 to the negative 4 to 1 times 10 to the negative 6. Well, we've decided to sell our home because we don't think it's safe to live here anymore. Radon typically occurs inside of homes um, as well as outside, but it is particularly dangerous because the indoor air environment um, is where many people and particularly children have a lot of exposure. So consequently, um, EPA has set very clear standards on the amount of radon that is allowable to protect health. And so we evaluate um, the air and make sure that uh, those homes uh, has less radon than the standards that's been set. And we started putting together a map of people who were either had died um, from cancer or had cancer or had thyroid disease or had um, another disease like gallbladder and other problems that they said were associated with the selenium that was in the contaminated water and also skin cancers. Um, serious, not little skin cancers, but melanomas. And so, um, and these are the two people who lived closest to the site, and they've died, both of them died. Um, he was a, he worked in the, the mill, but she always just stayed home in the house, and they died um, pretty horrible death of cancer, and she did, and, and uh, she had no other exposure just than living here. It started like with my mother-in-law. She got sick, sick first. Mother-in-law had a whole range of cancer. She had liver cancer. She had kidney cancer. She had bone cancer. Um, she had, uh, she was in a great deal of pain and never complained. Uh, she, um, 
by the time that we got to her cancer, it was so far gone that uh, there was no kind of chemotherapy, uh, nothing that would have helped her. It was, it was horrible. I am very concerned about my family's health. Um, you know, I, have, I was never sick until I moved out here. Um, you know, about uh, a year ago, I, I weighed over 200 pounds. I lost probably uh, 80 pounds, like boom, I just lost it. There was no medical reason why I lost that weight. Um, I just, I lost a bunch of weight. I've had uh, what they call seizure migraine headaches now. Uh, it, it's just crazy, you know, and it, it seems like it attacks the female worse than it does the males. You know, I shouldn't have had to have a total hysterectomy when my daughter was three years old. You know, I, I was young, I was only 23 years old. I've had breast cancer and of course my husband has um, lost about 48% of his lung capacity because of all the years that he worked in the mines. But my breast cancer came after I had lived here several years. Do you think that the Homestake site will ever be fully uh, remediated to a pre-mining condition? Our process in remediating sites is to determine the complete feasibility of um, the remedy as well as the feasibility of attaining our, attaining our remedial action goals. So ultimately, we do always hope to restore every site to the maximum extent possible. My parents had been involved in a lawsuit against the company and they had settled the lawsuit and had been told by the company, Homestake Barrett Gold, and also this was noted by the, the EPA reports, that this remediation would be completed in 10 years. And in the meantime, the company was going to pay for our water. And so the 10 years came and went. They said it would only, it would only ever contaminate the alluvial aquifer. 10 years came and went, and it went beyond the alluvial aquifer into the next aquifer, and then the next aquifer, and then the next aquifer, and now the way they're doing the remediation looks like it's pulling contamination from another Superfund site into our area through the last aquifer that we had available. And so that's the end of, of any potential um, water for this area and it's the end of you know literally billions of gallons of water that could have been used in New Mexico in, in the future. I wish that they would clean it up but the ground is so contaminated and uh, I, I see it going deeper into our aquifer that it's contaminated our water and uh, that's you know, it, when it gets that far down, it goes handed down to our generation after generation, and it, it contaminates our children. It, uh, you know, I really wish that um, that Homestake could have been with me when I had to take care of my mother-in-law and my father-in-law. My father-in-law died in my arms. I wish that my I wish that they could have been there with me when my mother-in-law was dying. Um, it's I'm I'm grateful that uh, Homestake wasn't uh, it wasn't their mother-in-law or their mother. I, I hope that Homestake never has to go through that with their people. It's a sad deal, you know, that they're killing people and they don't even care, you know. My vision for the area, ideally, would be back to the, the kind of drinking water we had before the mill and the tailings pile was put in. I'd like them to move that tailings pile because it's a blight on the area and it certainly is detrimental to health and to value of property. I'd like us to be the lovely little community that I thought I was getting into in 1975 with clean water, um, livestock in all the fields, alfalfa being raised and everybody feeling good about the area. We don't feel that way anymore. But I think we could if we could get the water cleaned up again and the tailings pile moved.